In today's video, we are going to learn how to import models other than primitive shapes into our scene. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlips and welcome back to my channel. Like I said, today we're going to look at how can we import a 3D model into our React 3 Fiber application. If you are new to the series, I highly recommend watching the full playlist from the start that will give you some great insight on all the subjects that we've covered thus far. 3D objects are usually made with tools such as Blender and 3ds Max and is known as modeling. Now, if you are someone who doesn't have the skills to actually create your own uh, 3D object, you have the options of going to sites like Sketchfab or TurboSquid, and there's many more to go and either use a model and download it for free or pay for a model. And if we take an example of a tree model, we can see that models come in different formats. And usually the format is to the program that it's been created in, such as Blender, Maya, and so on. But you also get more usable formats in all the 3D software, such as an FBX, an OBJ, and also a GLB file. I usually prefer the GLTF files, the GLB file, and the reason is because more and more metaverses are using that format because it can contain the animations as well as the textures all in one file. And that is great to use. But sometimes a GLTF might not be available and you only might see the FBX or OBJ. Well, you can import that model into Blender and then export it as a GLB file. As an example, here is Blender. Blender is a free open source 3D tool that you can use. I'm going to go ahead and import the FBX file. From the desktop, I've got this tree FBX. And this is how it looks. It's a pink tree with a white branch. Now, if I want to export the GLTF format, I can select the model. Click on File, Export, and then GLB or uh, GLTF. I always like to select the selected objects and then I can go ahead and export my tree. Then in the application, in the public folder, I have now created a models folder with the tree GLB file. And this is where we will reference it to, to import it in our scene. I just want you to know that you can also directly import your FBX file, OBJ, and GLTF, right? I just prefer the GLTF format because I want to keep everything consistent. But if you look at the React 3 Fiber documentation, you can see different ways for importing an FBX, OBJ, and of course the one that we are doing today. To load a model, we'll need a loader as well as the type of loader and in this case, the GLTF loader. Then we can implement a normal component like this and use the loader, passing it in the type of loader, as well as the path to that object. Let's add this to our scene. So go ahead and copy the imports and place them here at the top. Then let's create a new component and this will be our tree component. At the top, we're going to say we need the model and this will be equal to the use loader. We're going to pass in the GLTF loader as well as the path to our model, which is sitting in models and then tree. The model will now be stored in this variable. So next we can go ahead and return a primitive shape. So primitive, and a primitive takes in an object, and the object in our case will be our model. And not only the model, but pointing to the model.scene. Now that we have this, let's go ahead and add the tree model in our scene. Here we go, we've added our component, and this should now load the model, and then render it to our scene. And boom, in our scene we now have our beautiful tree. Notice how the tree does not show any shadows on our ground. And that is because we actually need to tell the objects inside of this tree scene that it needs to cast shadows. 
Before we go ahead and add the ability to cast shadows, what I would like to do is console.log the model. So we can actually see in our scene what is the model exactly. So if we refresh, we should see our model over here. Models that are imported share a similar structure like this. You get an animations property, which we'll discuss in future videos, as well as assets, cameras, materials, nodes, a lot of extra kind of properties that describes more information about the model. That is why we had to before specify model.scene. Here you can see the scene. If we expand the scene, it also has a lot of properties that's useful to its position and what it is and so on. But we get this interesting parameter, which is the children. In here are all the objects that is grouped together. And you can see the property over here, cast shadow. Now, this is the property we want to access on each individual object. And that's because this mesh is made up of different objects such as these spheres at the top, the pink ones, as well as the tree branches. So we need to go and iterate over them all and switch on all the shadows. That is fairly simple to do. So let's go ahead and do so. Firstly, we'll have to say model.scene.traverse. Traversing through the object will go through its children and make sure that we actually can check each object. Now, we can say that for each object that we traverse through, if the object, so if the object dot is mesh, and only if it's a mesh, we technically want to set that object dot cast shadow equal to true. And now that we've done that, we can get rid of our console log. And if we go back, we should see our beautiful shadow from the tree. And that is it. Ladies and gentlemen, I really hope you enjoyed this video with me. If you learned something, hit that like button, subscribe and comment below. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now.